Welcome. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that the University of Puget Sound is located on the traditional homelands of the Puyallup tribe. Graduates of the classes of 2023, families, colleagues, trustees, and friends, it's a joy to welcome you to the University of Puget Sound's 131st commencement in this, our 135th year. I cannot adequately express how thrilled we are to be here today to celebrate your accomplishments. None of us could have predicted the events that unfolded over the course of your college careers, but I applaud all of you for your resilience, spirit, and determination. Graduating senior Rain Filbert, class of 23, will now sing America the Beautiful, <clears throat> followed by our university chaplain, the Reverend David Wright, class of 1996, who will offer the invocation. Dear ones, we gather under this brilliant sun, Tahoma on the horizon, surrounded by the southern arms of the Salish Sea, to celebrate the class of 2023. In this beautiful and transformative context, I invite us to open our hearts and minds to one another and to the world around us. In this place, we encounter the sacred in myriad secular and spiritual ways, in the wonder of nature, lives of love and resilience and compassion, the mystery of God or goddess, the elegance and beauty of arts and science, seeking justice and equity, the transformative inquiry at the heart of the liberal arts. The sacred also resonates in the name of each graduate read aloud, in the words offered by our speakers. It surrounds us, infuses us, transforms us with gratitude, we find the sacred in the research, the relationships, the study, the communities we have built with you who graduate today. And so we send you forth as a living invocation, 
an expression of hope and change and into a world that sorely needs your wisdom, your passion, your compassion, things we've got to know about you as students. We dream that you may be a blessing to all the world, continuing the work of Tikkun Olam, of repairing the world, of carrying care and respect towards all sentient beings. As you graduate today, may you lean into that work with your full and dazzling selves, now and always a part of the life of Puget Sound. Amen and blessed be. Please be seated. You're welcome. My name is Bob Polad, and on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I'm pleased to welcome our graduating students and their families and friends, the faculty, and the staff of the university, as well as our special guests to this momentous day. Today we celebrate a rite of passage, the conclusion of our students' courses of study at the undergraduate or graduate level in the beginning of their lives as Puget Sound alumni. Graduates, you have done amazing things in your time as, uh, as students at Puget Sound, and we know great things lie ahead for each of you. On this special day, I hope you will remember the generations of loggers who have gone before you. Just as they have remained engaged after leaving campus, I hope you too will do the same. My son, Chris Polat, is a member of the class of 2007, and perhaps my grandchildren will follow in his footsteps as members of the classes of 2035, 37, and 39. I might not be here. We are a proud uh, Puget Sound family, and it is an honor to represent the University of Puget Sound as chair of its board of trustees. As you have been leaders at your college, we now invite you to join the trustees, members of the Alumni Council, and others to be leaders for your college. Keep in touch with your classmates and other logger friends. Mentor current students attend events in our hometown and here on campus, support faculty and student, students through gifts to the Puget Sound Fund. Mark the date for your fifth reunion in June of 2028, because you know what we say, once a logger, always a logger. Nice. My fellow trustees and I thank you all for participating today in this ceremony that represents the culmination of the undergraduate and graduate classes of 2023 Puget Sound Education and the commencement of the next stage in their lifelong Puget Sound experience. Now please join me in welcoming back to the podium Puget Sound's 14th president, Dr. Isaiah Crawford. Greetings, graduates, family members, and friends, and happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers who are with us today on the field and who are tuning in across the globe. A commencement ceremony is not only a celebration of each graduate, but an affirmation of the many contributions and sacrifices that family and friends have made over the years to support you. None of these exceptional graduates would be before us today without your love and support. So graduates, please give your loved ones a well-earned round of applause for all they've done to bring you to this moment in your journey. And now, I must congratulate and thank my faculty and staff colleagues for their important work in guiding, shaping, and inspiring and mentoring our graduates. Thank you for investing so much of yourself in our students. My colleagues, you have done an outstanding job. The evidence of your commitment is readily available, apparent. 
The achievement of these graduates are now part of your legacy and a clear demonstration of the contributions you have made to the world. Graduates, please join me in recognizing and thanking your faculty and staff for the difference they've made in your lives. <laughs> Graduates of the Puget Sound classes of 2023, those who've earned your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degrees, it's now my great pleasure to express my congratulations to each of you. The academic excellence you've pursued over your time at Puget Sound is a testament to your intellectual curiosity, hard work, commitment, and discipline. It has not been easy, I know. Along with the joy of discovery and the mastery of new concepts and ideas, there have also been moments of doubt, assignments that seemed impossible to complete, lessons both in and out of the classroom that expanded your sense of who you are and what you are here to do. And of course, you completed your studies as the world grapples with the pandemic, conflict and war in areas across the globe, our nation's responses to continued calls for racial and social justice and the challenges of the political divide within our democracy. You may have also faced personal struggles or loss. In your time here, just this spring, we as a campus community grieved the loss of one of our students, Ren Gollin, and we mourn as well the passing of Puget Sound's 13th president, Ron Thomas. These struggles and losses, whether they be in the wider world or right here at Puget Sound, make their mark on us. We carry them with us as we move forward, and they shape who we are and who we will become. The degree that we will soon bestow upon you will truly acclaim the profound significance of your achievement and your readiness to take on whatever may come before you in the years ahead. My faculty and staff colleagues and I wish you all the success you can achieve in whatever way you might measure or define success. But know that we also hold a particular expectation of you, that you will use this valuable education to make a difference in our world. You are prepared to do what is hard, to search for truth, and to do what you believe is right and just in creating a more humane world. President Emeritus Thomas was a champion for the enduring value of a liberal arts education, and I believe, as he did, that the Puget Sound education in which you have so fully invested yourself will give you the tools, the skills, the insights, and the experience to face the most difficult challenges that are before us. We have every expectation that you will do just that. Put your education to work to meet the needs of our world community. Graduates, be not afraid of your greatness. Reach high, reach deep, and change the world. To quote Winston Churchill, and he said, you will make all kinds of mistakes but as long as you are generous and true and also fierce, you cannot hurt the world or even seriously distress her. She was made to be wooed and won by youth. Graduates, Puget Sound graduates, the world is ready for you. It needs you. So off you go with purpose and impact, remake the world and know we walk right beside you every way. Thank you. It is now my great pleasure to tell you a little bit about our undergraduate class speakers. Ebony James. And Ali Stabinski. Ebony James, class of 2023 from Greenville, North Carolina, will graduate with a major in international political economy and a minor in Spanish. Ebony has been involved in many areas on campus, including the diner, residence life, 
the Center for Writing and Learning, the Black Student Union, and Associated Students of the University of Puget Sound. She has been praised for her leadership, communication skills, and kindness. Ebony has presented her research at National Conference on Peer Tutoring and Writing and was awarded a Vasilius grant to participate in the African American Studies 311, a study abroad course that will bring students for one month to Ghana in summer 2023 to participate in internships with Ghanan partners. Ebony plans to attend law school in the future. Ali Stabinski, class of 23, from Phoenix, Arizona, will graduate with majors in theater arts and studio art, as well as a minor in business. business. Ali has been involved in residence life, admissions, ubiquitous day improv, sketch comedy, the Jewish Student Union, and the Associated Students of the University of Puget Sound. She was awarded an off-field travel fellowship in summer 2022 to conduct research in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, Italy. And you may recognize her from her many productions with the theater department, such as The Game of Love and Chance and Euridusi. Ali is known for her creativity and humor. Please join me in welcoming Ebony and Ali to the podium. Sorry, we have some props. Hi, I'm Ailey. And I'm Ebony. And we're going to perform some stand-up comedy for you. Woo! No, I'm just kidding, but you do have to laugh at our jokes. <laughs> you may be wondering why there are two of us up here delivering this speech. No, they're probably wondering how long do I have to sit here on Mother's Day? Happy Mother's Day to all our families that have led us to this exciting graduation day. As a reward to you, Ebony and I will try to make this very quick. It all started our first semester here at Puget Sound in Geology 101. This class was amazing because being able to identify rocks just by looking at them is the best party trick. <laughs> and we all know you like rocks. Yeah, they like climbing them, not looking at them. Puget Sound Outdoors, let me hear you! <laughs> Geology was actually very important because I met my best friend in that class. Who? You, obviously. Oh, right. I remember it like it was yesterday. I had crutches and Ebony said, what happened to your knee? And Ailey told me how she fell off her bed in Register Hall. <laughs> Ailey and I have always partnered up for labs and field trips in geology and we really started to become friends, like fold mountains at convergent plate boundaries, sometimes called continental collision zones. Or but unfortunately, zones. we were sent home for COVID a few months later. Uh, our friendship and our bond was put on hold until junior year when we were resident assistants together in Todd Phibbs Hall. Woo! While Ebony and I reconnected over our love of reality television and trying to go viral on TikTok, we kept busy on campus. I was able to learn more about the oil discovery in Guyana when I went to support Ebony at her summer research symposium. And I saw Ailey's amazing direction in her scene for director's lab. I loved visiting Ebony while she worked in the Center for Writing and Learning or the diner. A big shout out diner staff! <laughs> <laughs> and I loved being able to see Ailey perform stand-up comedy at the Jewish Student Union Hanukkah party or waving to her while I saw her giving campus tours. Although Ebony and I made it look really easy, coming back to campus wasn't easy. We had transitioned from in-person classes and what we had known forever to going home and being virtual. We've all spent the last two years rebuilding a campus community that we had barely gotten to know. Ebony and I are honored to represent the class of 2023 and the leadership, flexibility, and resiliency you have shown in truly creating a campus community that future loggers will continue to experience long after we walk across this stage. I could always run into somebody I knew on the way to McIntyre, home of the International Political Economy Department. IPE, let me hear you! Woo! Or 
on my walk from Jones to Kittredge. Hey, Studio Arts and Theater Arts. We could not, we could not have made it without the people around us. We have received so much support from faculty, staff, coworkers, and friends. With COVID hitting our freshman year, it left us with a college experience that nobody expected, and it gave us an understanding of the value in each other. As we move forward past undergrad, it is important we take time to reflect just how special the class of 2023 is. Our class includes people like Keegan Smith, Woo! <laughs> who as repertory dance group president gave a space on campus for nearly 200 students to have fun, dance, and perform. Our class includes people like Eliana Goldberg, who helped, who helped rebuild the campus radio station while helping me lead the Jewish student community. We also can thank Kaden Diodati and Grant Conkle for serving as student body president and vice president as we resumed in-person classes. Alden Robert led the sustainability team on everyday recycling and major projects to uphold the saying, loggers live green. A special thank, out, thank you to those of you who have worked to make this campus better for students of color and from marginalized backgrounds, such as McKenna Hess Fletcher, who has consistently stood up and advocated for students of color, and the Office of Equity, Inclusion, and Diversity seniors, Nia Lawson, Journey Williams, Kirby Wong, and Alyssa Glade. Oh, shoot. Ebony, I lost my spot on the list of people to thank. <laughs> Ailey, you cannot thank all of those people. You're right, I know how to save some time. Special shout out to anyone named Emma, Jack, Maddie, Aiden. Never mind. we better wrap up or we might as well start calling people over to get their diplomas. Unless Provost Conta Georgiopoulos, do you want us to do that? <laughs> no, we can't do that. He spent the last three weeks learning how to pronounce everyone's name. When I think about the staff, faculty, and friends that have rebuilt this community in the midst of COVID-19, I think about Ebony and how lucky I am that Puget Sound was a place where I could build a friendship I know will last forever. And I think about Ailey. Looking to the future, we will carry these experiences, relationships, and memories well into our lives. This is a bittersweet time filled with lots of pride and celebration for the last four years of leadership and scholarship. It is also filled with the fears and worries that come along with saying goodbye to the people that got you through the most unprecedented times of our lives. Some may be worrying about their choice to study theater and painting. Oops, I meant to cut that line out. <laughs> but whether you know what your next steps are or are still frantically searching LinkedIn for jobs, I cannot wait to see what the future holds for you. Ebony, what's next for you? Law school, what's next for you, Ailey? Hopefully the comedy career takes off. Who would have thought we'd make it this far after the geology? We know you will all explode into the professional world like a Vesuvian eruption marked by columns of volcanic debris and hot gases ejected high into the stratosphere. Ailey, we are going to run out of time before we can give our surprise. Ebony and I have one big announcement to share with all of you. Ailey and I have been running the UPS Misconnections account this whole time. Oh, no. we're, we're, just we're just kidding, we're just kidding, we're just kidding. See you all at the reunion. <laughs> How about another round of applause for Ailey and Ebony? I'm now pleased to introduce our graduate class speaker, Leah Parsons. In our doctoral program in class of occupational therapy in 23 from Nancy, Kentucky. She's graduating with a doctorate in occupational therapy. Leah received her bachelor's degree in political science from Georgetown College and her master's in human resources and organizational development from the University of Louisville. She's exemplified dedication for the craft of occupational therapy while demonstrating humility, generosity, and inclusive leadership to her peers. Leah has assisted in Student Occupational Therapy Association events, 
attended gatherings with other Puget Sound military veterans, and volunteered at the Tacoma Rescue Mission, coached youth volleyball, and serves as a battalion operations officer in an Army Reserve chemical unit. Leah has also organized the first on-campus community health fair since the beginning of COVID-19's pandemic. And she is the proud wife of Dr. Michael Parsons and mom of two daughters, Annalise and Ross. Please join me in welcoming Leah to the podium. Good afternoon. I'm very honored to be here celebrating with all of you today, although I'm honestly feeling a bit of disbelief. If someone had told teenage Leah that I'd be on stage delivering a speech like this and collecting a doctorate in occupational therapy, I would have first asked, what's occupational therapy? You know, as I'm sure some of you are wondering right now. So. And then I would have rolled my eyes at the absurdity of making it that far in my education. I come from a large, modest, blue-collar family, and no one close to me had gone to college, so figuring it all out was pretty challenging at times. I was clueless when it came to choosing a field of study, knew nothing about student loans, and was not even sure I belonged there. I finished my first semester in 2002 at a small liberal arts college in Kentucky with an embarrassingly low GPA of 0.61. Yep, I know. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was working through some personal challenges. You know. Plus, I couldn't afford all my textbooks, and I tried to photocopy as many pages as I could from classmates. So my undergraduate years, while great in many ways, were also years of struggle. It wasn't until a few years later when I joined the military and was pushed to consider what kind of person and leader I truly wanted to be that I reflected more deeply on myself, my education, and my goals. I surrounded myself with people who were driven and growth-focused. I learned from them and from reflecting on my successes, but I really learned the most from my failures, which served as course corrections on my journey. I had basically just been allowing my life to happen to me, then finally figured out what I wanted and made the difficult changes to get myself here, to this moment, with all of you guys. So, okay. oh. yeah. Yeah. But each of you has your own unique story. None of us has made it to this point in our lives completely on our own. We're gathered here today because of the love and support of family, friends, teachers, mentors, and even strangers who gave us a shot. And now that we're here, we owe it to them and to ourselves to do something impactful with our knowledge and experiences. Knowledge to satisfy personal curiosity is gratifying, but those of us who benefited from continuing education also have a responsibility to use our knowledge for the benefit of others. And there certainly are so many people out there who need us. During my occupational therapy field work at, in the inpatient, I'm sorry, the outpatient clinic at Madigan Army Medical Center and inpatient acute care at Harborview Medical Center, I worked with people from many backgrounds who faced a variety of physical, mental, and emotional challenges. There was a woman who was very fearful of COVID and of facing the reality of the lump in her breast. She waited so long to get it checked out that by the time I saw her, she could barely lift her arms to dress or feed herself. There was a transgender woman who was hit by a car but was hesitant to have anyone reach out to her parents because she didn't want them to find out about her identity for fear of being disowned. There were people who were unhoused and, uh, and hospitalized after facing violence or injuries from exposure on the streets. There was a young woman who had a stroke shortly after giving birth and had to learn how to walk again and how to care for herself and her newborn with the use of only one arm. And then there was a teen who became paralyzed after trying to do a backflip at a trampoline park to impress a girl, and of course, so many others. You know, we take for granted the seemingly small everyday things that we do, like dressing or feeding ourselves, until our ability to do those things is suddenly taken away. The opportunity to help, with, help others with those challenges is what drew me to occupational therapy. It's a truly holistic profession where we work with people of all ages to assess needs, then collaboratively create a treatment plan to increase participation in meaningful activities and ultimately improve the individual's quality of life. I felt ready to work with my patients thanks to the incredible Puget Sound OT faculty, experience in our community-based on-site clinic, and thoughtful conversations with my fellow classmates. I witnessed how even, seeming, even seemingly small gains in function can greatly boost the human spirit. And of course, not every graduate out here will be working in healthcare, but every career involves human connection and the opportunity to have an influence in others' lives. My path forward involves becoming an Army occupational therapist 
And while that will require me to continue to move around the country, I plan to take one of my greatest resources gained here with me, my relationships with my fellow classmates and, the, and faculty. We've been fortunate to meet so many others here at Puget Sound who share the same passion for knowledge and service to others. So when you leave and life gets busy, I implore you to not forget each other. Reach out, share memories, share knowledge, and share resources. There is so much power in unity to achieve even greater goals. There will be times when we feel scared or intimidated to take our next big steps forward, whether that be in continuing education, taking a job far away from loved ones, or being the first to do something new in our fields. And that's when we have to draw on whatever source of inspiration drives us to continue. My amazing daughters, Annalise and Ross, have motivated me to push myself to do more and to be more. I wanted to show them that dreams are worth fighting for and that it's never too late to become who you're meant to be. Even if your grades have not always been the best, and even if the path was not always easy or clear, in the wise words of the Avett brothers, decide what to be and go be it. So in closing, I want to say congratulations to the first occupational therapy doctoral class at the University of Puget Sound and in the state of Washington. And also a special thank you to my incredible husband, Mike, for his endless love and support and happy Mother's Day to all you fellow moms out there. Thank you. Thank you, Ebony, Eliana, and Leah for those inspiring words. As we honor our graduates today, it's also appropriate that we take time to recognize an individual who by his words and deeds models the aspirations we have for our graduates and the mission of the University of Puget Sound. The Board of Trustees thanks him for allowing us to share his story and achievements and for sharing his words of inspiration and encouragement today. The citation for our honorand, William H. Barzma, class of 64, parent of 93, will be read by Dr. Alan Krauss, Associate Professor of Business and Leadership and direct, Director of the Business and Leadership Program. William H. Bill Barsma, through your extraordinary dedication to civic service, to the study and sharing of history, and to your commitment to the people of the city of Tacoma, you exemplify what it means for a Puget Sound graduate to meet the highest tests of democratic citizenship. A native of the city of destiny and a proud graduate of Stadium High School, you chose to pursue your bachelor's degree close to home at the University of Puget Sound. Following your graduation with a degree in political science, your passion for politics and government led you to relocate to Washington, D.C. to attend George Washington University for graduate school. There, you gained hands-on hands -on experience in advocacy and policymaking, working for Senator Henry M. Jackson and serving as a White House Fellow with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. When you returned to Tacoma, you wasted no time in sharing your hard-earned hard knowledge with others, joining the faculty at your alma mater, Puget Sound. From 1968 to 2001, you taught generations of loggers in a diverse range of courses, including business management, public administration, political science, and urban planning. You also provided leadership to this campus as interim director of the Black Studies Program. However, your interest in civic life was not confined to the classroom. In 1991, you were elected to a seat on the city council where you sought to improve the lives of your fellow citizens. Then, in 2001, you stepped into a larger leadership role in local government when you became the 38th mayor of Tacoma. During your tenure as mayor, you advocated for historic preservation projects like the restoration of Union Station and the Murray Morgan Bridge. 
You also oversaw the historic cleanup of the Foss waterway, supported the reinvigoration of Tacoma's downtown district through the opening of the Museum of Glass and Tacoma Art Museum, and you shepherded launch of the largest municipally owned telecommunication system in North America. Ever a student of history, you also supported early efforts to reckon with and begin to redress the violent expulsion of Chinese residents in 1885 through the creation of the Tacoma Chinese Reconciliation Park. Beyond your leadership on this campus and in our local government, you are also the immediate past president of the Tacoma Historical Society. Your significant long-term contributions to the study and teaching of Pacific Northwest history led the Washington State Historical Society to bestow on you the Robert Gray Medal in addition to numerous other awards and honors that you have received. President Crawford, in recognition of the exemplary career of Bill Barsma and on recommendation of the faculty of the University of Puget Sound, I present him as a candidate for a degree of Doctor of History, honoris causa. By the power invested in me by the authority of the Board of Trustees, it is my pleasure to present this honorary degree to Bill Barsma. Well, I'd like to thank uh, President Crawford, the trustees, and the faculty for giving me, a Puget Sound graduate, the honor of delivering today's commencement address on the university's 135th year. Now, 59 years ago at commencement, I was sitting on your side of the stage, and I have to confess, I was so excited about graduating and so nervous about walking across the stage to shake the hand of the president and receive my diploma I honestly can't tell you who delivered the commencement address or what was said. Today, I hope to leave with you some stories and insights that will resonate. Let me begin uh, by sharing an experience I had as a freshly minted Puget Sound graduate, which may serve as a teachable moment. As was noted in the introduction, after getting my BA in political science, I was accepted as a public administration student for graduate study at the George Washington University in the nation's capital. Shortly after arriving in DC, I found an apartment within walking distance of the campus and I alerted the university office that I needed a roommate to help with expenses. A few days later, my phone rang. It was a new grad student who introduced himself as Daly J. Durr from Asheboro, North Carolina. He too was looking for a roommate. And as it turns out, Daly was the first person I had ever talked to from south of the Mason-Dixon line. When we met at the apartment, I asked where he went to school. He told me he had graduated from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, explained what a Tar Heel was, said that he was active in campus politics, and was a personal friend of North Carolina Governor Terry Sanford. In addition, he had been hired for a position at the executive office of the president. Now, truth be told, I was, shall I say, a little awestruck. And then Daly asked me in his thick southern drawl, where did you go to school? And I sputtered a bit, and I hemmed and hawed, and I said, well, a small private school you probably never heard of, hard for me to say this, in the Seattle area. <laughs> oh my. He then said to me, you know, Bill, I have some friends who are students at the University of Puget Sound in Tacoma, Washington. <laughs> they tell me it's a great school. Do you know anyone from the University of Puget Sound in Tacoma? And I replied, uh, me. <laughs> and I asked who the students were uh, that he knew. And when he told me, I said, you know, I know them. They were classmates of mine. 
At this point, a song popped into my head. It was a big hit when I was a senior here. It was written by that most accomplished composer and lyricist, Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys. The song was, Be True to Your School. In my four years living in the other Washington, I never again uttered the words, I'm uh, from a small private school you never heard of, ah, uh, in the Seattle area. It was always, I went to the University of Puget Sound, it's a great school. In fact, I will say that my experience in education at Puget Sound served me well in my work on Capitol Hill and in the executive branch, applying what I had been taught to think critically, write cogently, and express myself clearly. Now, enough of my past. Given that Puget Sound was founded 135 years ago, and being that I'm admittedly a history nerd, I will share a bit about this institution and how it's evolved over time. In my graduating class, over 80% of the students were from the state of Washington, and half of those were townies. I was one of those who lived at home and drove to school. In large measure, back then, Puget Sound was a commuter school. Obviously, some big changes have occurred at Puget Sound since my days as a student and my time as a faculty member. I submit there were two major events that triggered those big changes. First, Tacoma Community College opened its doors in 1965. This caused the policymakers in Jones Hall to conclude that they had a serious problem, competition for the town E. They realized that Puget Sound needed an expanded vision and to aggressively recruit students from a broader region, primarily west of the Rockies. Up to that point, Puget Sound had been relatively unknown outside of the Pacific Northwest. The institution needed a rebranding. The solution, Puget Sound must embark on a program of big time intercollegiate athletics. And so Puget Sound moved away from traditional small school competitors and set its sights on the other Washington schools, University of Washington, Washington State, Seattle U, and Gonzaga. In addition, games were scheduled against big schools opponents from the mountain, re mountain states in Oregon, Nevada, California, and Hawaii. The school also expanded its academic agenda, initiating graduate and undergraduate degree programs on branch campuses in Seattle, Olympia, and Bremerton, plus a law school in downtown Tacoma. It's estimated that nearly 5,000 students were pursuing degrees at Puget Sound's main campus and regional campuses combined. Just think of that. The big time athletic program was incredibly successful with Puget Sound winning nearly 70% of its games, capturing the state's first national collegiate championship in men's basketball and competing in the College Baseball World Series. In addition, many of its student athletes were drafted by major league teams, including two first rounders in baseball. Prospective students from throughout the region took notice and incoming classes began to reflect a demographic change. Now, the school's second major cha uh, change-causing event. The late Phil Phibbs' arrival as president 50 years ago in 1975. At this point, I want to take the opportunity to pay tribute to Phil, who I served with when I was on the faculty, and his transform transformative leadership and what it meant to your class. Like most folks, Phil was in awe of the school's athletic achievements as well as the continuing success of the off-campus academic programs. However, he eventually concluded, and the trustees agreed, that the mission, that mission would not be sustainable in the long run for a small, private, primarily undergraduate, residential liberal arts university. He believed that for a school like Puget Sound to be sustainable strategically, it needed a long-term proactive vision with three general goals. Big-time academics should replace big-time athletics as a priority. Prospective Rhodes Scholars should be even a higher priority than prospective first-round Major League base Baseball draft choices. And a nationally recognized and prestigious Phi Beta Kappa chapter at Puget Sound was even more important in the long run than, than attaining a national men's basketball championship. And Dr. Phibbs also believed that students should, at Puget Sound, that, should, that Puget Sound should focus on the main campus and its 2,800 students, thus phasing out the branch campus programs. He then proceeded to build a healthy endowment and develop a plan to successfully recruit students from throughout the country. 
With the enactment of Title IX, Dr. Fibbs recognized the opportunity it afforded for young women and men to participate in a robust small college athletic program at Puget Sound. The many championship banners hanging on the field house wall are testament to the success of that effort. Now, President Fibbs initiated truly historic and transformative changes for this university, which made Puget Sound what it is today and follows his mantra of providing, and I quote, providing students with an education that would last for a lifetime in an ever-changing world, end quote. And you, Puget Sound's class of 2023, are the beneficiary, beneficiaries of that education for a lifetime, as defined by Dr. Fibbs, in six key points. You have learned to communicate effectively, both orally and in writing. You are trained to think logically, analytically, and independently. You've been inspired to learn on your own. You've studied a specific discipline in depth in order to experience the power of learning and acquire the knowledge required for an introduction to your career. In addition, you're introduced to a wide variety of academic fields and activities in, in order to acquire the breadth of learning that is a mark of a well-educated human being. And finally, your studies at Puget Sound have encouraged and assisted you in the development of your own personal philosophy or system of values. Pr past presidents Susan Pierce and Ron Thomas built on the foundation set by Phil Fibbs some 50 years ago. This effort continues through the university's current extraordinary strategic plan. President Crawford and his team have built upon and refined the concept of an education of a lifetime with their vision of leadership for a changing world. Now, in the years ahead, there will be many positive memories about your professors, what you've learned, and memorable experiences that you've had. And I'd like to just share one of mine. After I had the honor of being elected to Coma's mayor, I received a phone call from one of my political science professors, Dr. Earl Krushke, then living in, in California. I asked Professor Krushke if he remembered one of my classmates, Karen Risfit. He said he did, and he remembered her as a fine student. I said, Professor Krushke, Karen, who you taught with me in your local government class, was elected the 33rd mayor of Tacoma, the first woman so honored. And I followed her to be elected the 37th mayor. There was a brief science, silence, and he responded, I taught you well. And I responded, indeed, sir, you did. So Puget Sound graduates, as you embark upon this next stage of your life, you carry with you treasured memories of your time here, as well as a solid educational foundation. You also hold in your hands our future. Who knows? A few decades from now, one of you may be standing at this microphone, having invented a world-changing technology, found a cure for a devastating disease, served as an elected official, or negotiated peace between factions. I can see in your faces the promise of better things to come for your community, region, country, and the world. So in closing, as someone who has lived through an abundance of life experiences, I, live, I leave you with these words of advice. First, embrace challenges as opportunities to learn something new, adding to your education for a lifetime. Be flexible. Change happens. Apply your critical thinking skills. When you face tough obstacles, and you will, persevere and create an expanded vision. Take time to savor the good times. And the last one, and this one you'll never, this one, please don't forget, always be true to your school. Go loggers! Thank you. Thank you so much, Bill, for those words of encouragement and for your support of our graduates and for your steadfast belief in the power of education. And now, for the very long-awaited moment, we will now begin with the presentation of candidates for the bachelor's degrees.
please hold your applause until all 455 of the graduates present have received their diploma so that the name of each candidate can be heard as it is read. If, of course, you're a member of the graduates' family, please feel free to cheer vigorously. Dr. Nick Kontajartopoulos, our provost, will present the candidates for the bachelor's degree. President Crawford, the students before you have been recommended by the faculty to receive the bachelor's degree. By the authority vested in me as president of the University of Puget Sound and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I hereby confer upon each of you who have completed the requirements the bachelor's degree with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereunto. Provost Contradropoulos will now introduce the candidates individually. Will the candidates please come forward? <laughs> McKenna Hess Fletcher. Mara Devine Johnson. Miles Dante Z. Jun Tilly Knox Warshaw. Amalia Lynn Matthews. Sara Murphy Solano. Ainsley Jane Windecker Nelson. <laughs> Livia Catherine Reeder. Annabelle Walsh Richard. <laughs> Brenda Robles. Marion Jean Rogers. Julia Carol Saucier. <laughs> Alyssa Marie Glabe. Jimmy Le. Emily Avril Mitchell. Ezrin Aubard. Trevor Panett. <laughs> Sophia Pivnik. <laughs> Nina Rose Roybal. <laughs> Sultana Wakia. <laughs> Seth Jacob Ack. Ananya Ahuja. Khalid Al Rashidi. Lane and Dolsek. Katie Bauer. Aiden Bicknell. McKenna Lee Boulay. <laughs> Mael Antoine Bradley. <laughs> Connor Jared Buchanan. <laughs> Beatrice Veronica Bugos. 
Ben Carlson. Sharon Chen. Dylan Jacob Connor. Catherine Ann Kroonquist. Stella Isabella Doms May. Cecilia Lou Dahl Wolf. Nayana Cecilia DeHart. Nayana's diploma will be presented by Professor Monica DeHart. Sarah Grace Dormer. Franklin James Dorschel. Anna DuPont. Alexi Ebersole. Benjamin Alder Fox. Olivia Frost. Faye Fujimoto. Stephanie Gerber. Andrew Miller Glass. Jake Edward Graham. Sasha Greenschmitz. Isabel Hendricks. Maddie Heider. Braden John Henricks. Kelsey Mieko Hooker. Sophie Eleanor Jensen. Capriana Eileen Jong. Zachary Johnson. Sophia Claire Casper. Giselle Emiko Panganiban Kawahara. Jonas Kim. Luke Akihiro Kitamura. Emily La Riviere. Mora Roma Lake. Tyler Leibert. Eleanor Mack. Kira Malone. Nicole Jordan Campbell Mannix. Helen June McDonald. Max Davis Merrill. Megan Elizabeth Mooney. Amelia Lane Morgan. Michaela Christine Newman. Christina Chi Nguyen. Henry Livermore Norton. Maria Olivia Ortiz. Jordan Abraham Lazar Schoen. Samantha Rose Schwint. Flannery Jewel Simchuk. Colby Smith. Fatu B. Sokna.
Misha Miyoko Tasaka. Joshedi Torres. Nicolo Spalding Torresan. Yajaira Villanueva. Elizabeth Elsie White. Natalie Vang Yates. Mason Torres Baumgartner. Daniel Keith Bogan. Daniel's diploma will be presented by trustee Frederick W. Grimm, class of 1978. Jack Bonicato. Michael Chernick. Jenna Kathleen Rose de Corso. John Caden Diodati. John Bratton Dubose the fifth. Maylee Jane Fields. Kira Elizabeth Hartley. Cole Hout. Corey James Hodder. Lilia Pearl Jackson. Dylan Mark Joyce. Milang Nguyen Lam. Zachary Mason. Thomas Okel. Lucy Fury Peloso. Shane Kakoa Queener. Sophia Olivia Scherer. Quinn Williamson. Scott Chuyu Asbury. Kiana Brittany Mojica Bonowitz. Andre Joseph Bussier. Blake Cole. Rebecca Elise DeSala. Parker Duff. Amanda Ferguson. Helen Nicole Fickus. Michael Matthew Forsgren. Naomi Mira Gilbert. Tess Gina Goldstone. Calum Matthew Gullib. Kyler Wayne Greenway. Leonardo Adrian Miles Hall. Charles Laporte Handel. Ethan Holst. Gabriel John Wante. Jonah Adam Mendelson. Catherine Elizabeth Minahan. Hold on. 
Panu Turutat Fan. Lauren Ann Rice. Alejandro Rodriguez. Noah Kyle Springer. Samantha Ann Swartout. Musi Teclamarium. Christopher Donald Michael Underdown. Yesenia Verdin. Radica Ann Webster Schultz. Zachary Jordan Werner. Calvin Paul Wirtz. Sam Zevanov. Cascade Frey Almond. Hunter Nicole Berry. Spencer Philip Baum. Brooke Jeanette Bogdanovich. Samantha Kate Bronze. Wow. Renee Alexi Del Barco the wow. Third. Adelaide Joy Fanner. Wow. Maxwell James Hedayati. Wow. Audrey Camille Hurt. Julie May Messing. <laughs> Kalena Kiyomi Montgomery. <laughs> Kelsey Nicole Newman. <laughs> David Meriden Pierce. <laughs> Lynn Fan. Dane Roscoe Reynolds. Andrew Clayton Shireman. Maddie Lee Whitney. Carson Carey. Grace Doyle. Natalie Yolanda Hernandez Alvarez. Justice Simone Jackson. Isaiah David Gerens. Brett Matthew Cobe. Jefferson Henry Lane. Tannis. Norton. Grace Petinia Hillier. Simone Shaw. Keegan Smith. Kylie Aaron Smith. Caitlin Ann True. Annie Kennedy Vandenberg. William Campbell. Lars Cologne. Elliot Ernest. Yang Fu. Caitlin Eileen Ann Gutierrez George. David Isaac Jensen. 
Ethan Paul Kearns. John Thor Christensen. Sean Luke Yun Martin. Jack Mason McCuller. Connor Thomas Millison. Emmalyn Peruccio. Jack Morris Powers. Dawson Raiden. Blake Robertson. Sven Schneidergers. Evan Shigemura. Ryan Smith. Jordan Michael Ubaldo. Kieran Berryman. Athena Brown. Sigrun Elizabeth ID Payne. Vivian Ann Gray. Samya Kanan. Kaylin Sean Kelly. Rebecca Elizabeth Kitt. Gabrielle Lemieux. Emmalyn Rose McCarthy. Lindsay Mullen. Sophia Priceman. Sophia Annalie Lazar Schoen. Thaddeus Franklin Smith. Michael Joseph Smolskis. Annie Sullivan. Rachel Leslie Vysick. Tatum Jane Bunnett. Shea Rochelle Crowley. Connor A. McDaniel. Holland N. Mueller. Kaylin O'Curran. Aislinn Jade Renner. Chloe Kaiulani Kimiko Ahiona Bannon. Rovin Ian Medrano Antonio. Kira Christina Barrows. Kate Elizabeth Campagna. Emily Sofia Cornejo. Kevin Diego Covarrubias. Tommy Din. Victoria Marie Friedrich. Catherine Elizabeth Frasiris. Kendall Gantz. William Gross. Freya Hayes. Henry Hernandez. Ryan Jones. Paul John McCann Ramirez. 
Zoe Mary Sashie Minakami. Grace Musa. Allison Gloria Shocker. Grace A. Sexton. Kelly Siemens. Jackson Scaff. Shalei Kapililani Tome. Jonathan Cyril Walker Whitmore. Hannah Lee Washburn. Isaiah Z. Williams. Jenna Rose Williams. Cameron Elise Zell. Kira Sinju Patton. Audrey Rice. Charlotte Wong. Andrew Campbell. Chloe Gray. Mia Holbert. Sophia Grace Thames. Gordon Michael Davies. Alana Skye McCurdy. Forrest Bell. And Catherine Kiska. Cormac Robert Smith. Lily Helen Turner. Akiva Gray Adva York. Emma Apgar. Ainsley Grace Austin. Rachel Ruth Becker. Ava Martinson. Mia June Niebel. William Ross Balaam. Jesus Deloya Garcia. Richard David Saborio Rangel. Matthew James Baber. Samuel Robert Baker. Theo Jonah Bauman. Christopher Louis Bayer. Caroline Carranza. Ryan Patrick Carruth. Carolyn Davies. Alexander Thomas Elmore. Peter Sean Fagan. Neil Griffin. Rocio Guevara Perez. Madison Ann Haddon. Imani Bernay Jenkins. 
Maya Sophia King Kayer. Lauren Mosman. Jessamine Lyra Novice. Cameron Mark Nielsen. Jack Anthony Schneider. Chloe Leslie Shankland. Philip Ryan Spence. Ari Shapiro Zansberg. Evelyn Faye Babby. Marco Roman Babiak. Jordan Buser. Ella Jane Demerit. Jake Harrison. Connie Holt. Ebony Renee James. Haley Ann Kellison. Grant Conkle. Miles Henry Lawson. Hannah Ray Lillard. May Niebuhr. Caroline Phillips. Beatrice May Roberts. Lily Margaret Tierney. Hayes Oliver Tomlinson. Langston Aaron. Bennett Bainham. Jack Bodine. Clark William Brace. Grant Erickson. Tristan James Gaeta. Benjamin Gamble. Robert Kaskin Gattaker. Lucas Gover. Connor Hong. Ronit Mother. Benjamin McAuliffe. Brian McMurray. Ava Olson. Emily Oquist. Shung Eun Park. Jack B. Ruder. Owen Pierce Russell Lanning. Madison Sanchez Foreman. Congratulations. Ava Sophia Shimansky. Jared Connor Dashes. Dasher Vilyaka.
Leah Emily Week. Christopher East. Rain Patricia Filbert. Caitlin Elizabeth Hassing. Carson, Carson Daniel Lilly. William Peter Lum. Dylan Adarker Peterson. Julia Marielle Ongsip Tan. Ivan Tarasenkov. Ismael Gutierrez. Jules Aubert. Emma Kate Sintz. Olivia Danner. Austin Glock. Trevino Lewis. Jacob McRae. Rowan X. Sanford Eckhaus. Gabriel Alves de Lima. Camille Marcou Bayema. Megan Marie Bell. Emma Browning. Alana Cohn. Aiden Elizabeth Estrada. Agostino Gianpaolo Fonte. Emma Fish. Tatum Francis Hansen. Tavish Laughlin. Nia Taylor Lawson. Moira Si Jing Li. Miriam Guadalupe Leon Fernandez. Olivia Claire Leonard. Zoe Love. Hannah Merrill Woodward. Romeo Amari Motonaga. Alexander Feifel. Paige Leanne Soller. Abigail Stranahan. Tian Hong Liu Ta. Story Madison Thomas. Ethan Jacob Weiss. Journey Reese Williams. Natalie Charlesworth. Genevieve Chesler. 
Ava Setup Claire Chalakian. McKenna Carolina Clark. Lucy Kramer. Skyler Esteron De La Cruz. Renee Donis. Eva Catherine Grenewalt. Maria Estela Guajardo. Emma Jordan Hahn. Macy Hans. Ashley Hong. Emmett Kalmeyer. Emily Rose Kidd. Benjamin Nathaniel King. Brooklyn Rose Kinsler. Catherine Ann Kitlitz. Caitlin Grace McNeil. Amelia Margaret Meacham. Gabrielsa Nelson. Esperanza Marie Neville. Brennan Cassidy Pryor. Casey Ann Radke. Alejandra Regina Moreta Ridley. Abigail Catherine Seeds. Hayden Smith. Savannah Lynn Smith. Graceland Stensland. Gracie Claire Wenner. Alden Samuel Zalma. Hope Freeman. Eliana Goldberg. Elizabeth Joy Anderson Hennessy. Molly Kodish. Horatio Gates Lloyd. Elizabeth Lauren Rasmussen. Alden Timothy Robert. Zoe Elise Fox Brinner. Madeline Northcote Smith. Tiffany Pye. Jordan Reese. Olivia Francis Almi. Quincy Rose Bento. Joshua Carrillo. Lila Elizabeth Collins. Ella Berlin DeSantis. Cora Smythe Fanslow. Sophia Fullman. Morgan Armstrong Hall. Jolie Ann Jenkins. 
Melina Alexandra Kintai. Madeline Lampard. Amaris Zakia McKnight. Sarah Moss. Kiana Nardone. Quinn Evelyn Scher. Jessa Michaela Snober Wokes. Megan Elizabeth Sudak. Anna Kathleen Sweetland. Max Isaac, Isaac Tillen. Elijah Turner. Kirby Joy Wong. Laura Woodhouse. Sabine Noemi Yoder Schrock. Eden Marielle Endewart. Rin Siri Smith. Eliana Beth Stabinski. Allison Churek. Samantha Sarah Webb. How we doing? All righty. We now come to the presentation of the candidates for graduate degrees. Again, please hold your applause until all 127 degrees have been awarded. If, of course, you're a member of the graduate's family, please feel free to cheer vigorously. Provost Kanto Georgopoulos will present the candidates for graduate degrees. Will the candidates for the graduate degrees please stand? <laughs> President Crawford, the students before you have been recommended by the faculty to receive the graduate degrees. By the authority vested in me as president of the University of Puget Sound and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I hereby confer upon each of you who have completed the requirements the Master's of Arts in Teaching degree, the Master of Education and Counseling degree, the Master of Public Health degree, the Master of Science and Occupational Therapy degree, the Doctor of Occupational Therapy degree, and the Doctor of Physical Therapy degree with all the rights privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereunto. Provost Kanto Georgopoulos will now introduce the candidates individually. Will the candidates please come forward? For the Master of Arts in Teaching, Noah Allen Abu Allen. Aaron David Johnson Benson. Cassandra Bundrick. William Cooper. Courtney Farver. Woo! 
Antarena Judith Gutierrez Small. Nathan Harmon. Camry Kathleen Human. Georgia Lee Lavender. Sophia May Lavender. Miguel Ledesma. Iana Kaylee Lull. Rachel Mary Melman. James Roberts. Catherine Elizabeth Robinson. <laughs> Natalie Ross. Desalia. Amber Rukti. Evan R. Clark Wilson. For the Master of Education in Counseling, Jamal Devon Brown. <laughs> Katrina Brown. Katrina Beth Caldwell. Jack Benjamin Russell Craggs. Nicole Halbert. Sarah Elizabeth Johnson. Jacqueline J. Layton. Mackenzie Jane McMahon. Zaria Janae Parker. Vicky L. Pastore. Christiana Marie Person. Aaron J. Reggio. <laughs> Bailey Jordan Shaw. <laughs> Monique Thakar. Megan Elizabeth Smith. Ari Todd Spector. MBH. 
for the Master of Public Health, Caroline Ann Blackburn. Daphne Giselle Gallegos. Margaret McLeod King Kate. Julia Krieger. Nathan Sidel. <laughs> Rebecca Melinda Stern McCosby. <laughs> Aldrin Medallo Villahermosa II. Aldrin's diploma will be presented by trustee Chris R. Polad, class of 2007. For the Master of Science in Occupational Therapy, Caitlin Rayanne Alejo. Kevin Antoine. Josie Lucille Ash. Garrett Thomas Bagdon. Bregan Danae Bester. Grace Gloria Booker. Yvonne Monique Brigman. Christine Nicole Calais. Lauren Chan. Kayla Louise Estes. Audrey Ginger. Gabrielle Rachel Golinvo. Elizabeth Harrington. Chloe Marie Herrera. Tatiana Isabel Klein. Audrey Larson. Alexa Neath Carney Mahoney. Rachel Marie McElroy. Lonnie Elise Mesmer. Tess Morgan. Sharon Hanna O. Oh. Andrea Jaden Preisel.
Katie Elizabeth Riddle. Michaela Stahl. For the doctorate in occupational therapy, Cooper M. Cochran. <laughs> Catherine Marie Dodgy. <laughs> Kylie Renee Darby. Tessa Rose Dunbar. Kelsey Elizabeth Graber. Lauren Marie Hamilton Smolin. Michelle Nore Ingersoll. Elise Mackenzie Love Johnston. Samantha Lynn Kalmbacher. Noelle Brittany Carr. <laughs> Catherine Naxted. <laughs> Serena Kuroski. <laughs> Monica Lyons. Colleen O'Hagan. <laughs> Leah Marie Parsons. <laughs> Sarah Pluvier. Samantha K. Reed. Inga Marie Rodi. Katie Elizabeth Strain. Anthony Joseph Kersillus Sai. <laughs> Anthony's diploma will be presented by Professor Cecile Kersillus Sai. <laughs> Alexis Narsara Barostek Rutger. Hannah Yu. For the doctorate in physical therapy, Elizabeth Francine Albuton. Andrew Jordan Andrada. Jordan Barber. Yes, Jordan. Ashley Buttleman. <laughs> Landon Scott Collier.
Jacqueline Flora Diulio. Kara Elizabeth Fils. Nicole Gerchak. Sunny Sunmin Gill. Jade Graves. Kate Caroline Hovdi. Haley Elizabeth Kettle. Lindsay Alexis Koski. Anna Laura Krupp. Elizabeth Rose Lausch. Jason P. Leeds. <laughs> Catherine Elizabeth Lipkowski. Isaiah Leroux. Hannah Jane Loveland. <laughs> Taylor Akemi Murai. <laughs> Eric Lam Nguyen. Zachary Jude Oster. Yeah. Nikki Pertzagali. <laughs> Tyson Shanholzer. Jillian Michelle Stower. Matthew Vernon Stoner. Megan Nicole Warren. Kayla Renee Withers. Vance Robert Wood. Members of the classes of 2023, we send you now with great hope from Puget Sound out into the world. This time is yours, and I can think of no more fitting way than to send you out into the world than with this inspiring performance by members of the Adelphian Concert Choir, conducted by Professor Stephen Zofi, singing Take Time, composed by Professor Rob Hutchinson.
Take time to live, classes of 2023. It is what life is for, and may you make not only your own lives, but the lives of others better in everything you do. And now, let us join together to sing our alma mater. Rain Filbert, class of 23, will join us again to sing the traditional rendition of the alma mater once, and then invite us to join her in the second time through. Let me thank the commencement band for their performance today. A round of applause for them, please. As always, they add so much to our celebration. And 